good day. I am Professor Yaku Ulifir, UNESCO Chair on Multimodal Learning and Open Educational Resources and Professor in Multimodal Learning in the Faculty of Education of the Northwest University, South Africa. At the Northwest University, I do my research within the research unit, Self-Directed Learning. I would like to introduce some concepts and some practical implications of our latest book entitled Self-Directed Multimodal Learning in Higher Education, as was published by AOSIS. This book focuses specifically on self-directed multimodal learning within the university context. This concept, self-directed multimodal learning, can be defined as an approach to education where individual modal preferences, communication through different modalities, as well as the blending of learning and teaching delivery by means of different modes are employed with the specific aim of fostering self-directedness among students. Firstly, with this book, as is the case with all the books in the NW Self-Directed Learning series, the aim is to explore self-directed learning, or SDL, in ways in which it can be fostered in educational set settings. Self-directed learning in turn refers both to a student characteristic or a process. This process, according to uh, people like Malcolm Knowles, um, relates to the way in which students take charge of their own learning alone or through the help of others in identifying what they need to learn setting their own goals and selecting resources which can either be material or actually even appropriate others. The students then select and apply certain learning strategies and then finally evaluate the set goals. This of course, self-directed learning, um, depends on subjects, depends on contexts and students are not merely generically self-directed, but self-directedness uh, and self-directed learning are are concepts that are very relevant within the environment of the fourth industrial revolution, where we aim to create uh, lifelong learners, learners who have uh, a sense of agency in taking charge of their own learning and continuing to learn as the context change and the environment changes. Learning um, within this book is also approached in terms of multimodality. Now, learning has always been multimodal in, na in nature. However, at the start of this book, I unpack specifically how we can identify different levels of multimodality within multimodal learning. Key to this view is regarding learning as communication. So the four levels that we look at, um, especially within the first chapter, are the individual uh, multimodality, interactional multimodality, um, instructional multimodality and finally institutional multimodality. So at the lowest level, the focus is on the individual, on the learner, the student. So research tells us that individuals have preferences in terms of modalities when it comes to the learning process. So different stages, different modes of communication and learning are preferred and are actually used and chosen by students. As I say, this is called individual multimodality. Building on that is the concept of interactional multimodality, and this relates to the communication process itself. This ties in with a, a whole range of, of uh, concepts from literature from people like Gunther Kress and Thieu van Leeuwen, who work on multimodality as a communicative aspect. So in the communication process in the classroom, um, not only verbal communication is possible, but also nonverbal. So nonverbal content is highly relevant for any teaching circumstance. When you move into the online uh, environment, um, this becomes even more complicated and dynamic, where communication happens not just in terms of uh, the more traditional verbal and nonverbal, but where uh, pictures, animations, sound, um, videos, and even virtual learning environments um, also have communicative value. So teachers need to be informed on how to use that uh, communicative value that is embedded in, for example, the graphical or the visual or audio um, aspects of, for example, the uh, online learning or virtual worlds. So building on 
the third level, the instructional uh, level that, that comes after the interactional, the focus is here on how learning is transmitted, how learning is taking place. The final two levels of multimodality, instructional and institutional, are very relevant for this book, as a number of chapters work within that um, context. So instructional multimodality relates to where the learning takes place, online, face-to-face, -face, or in a blended learning manner. So we build a lot on the extensive literature and scholarship around blended learning. Finally, at an institutional level, the focus is on whether an institution follows a contact, distance, or hybrid mode of delivery. Quite often, um, these different levels of multimodality cannot just be considered in isolation, as in any learning environment, there is some interaction between the levels and all of them have a role to play. Due to the prominence of blended learning for this book, this concept was explored extensively in different uh, theoretical and practical um, approaches. So blended learning um, is specifically looked at in terms of the community of inquiry framework. This framework emphasizes the importance of the cognitive, social, and teaching presence in blended learning. Cognitive, highly important for, for teachers to consider that in how that can be addressed in the teaching and learning situation. Social, uh, even more so when it comes to online learning, as students can easily um, find themselves to be very isolated, and that is detrimental to learning. So one needs to um, compensate for what could have happened face to face where students could have interacted um, so that that can happen virtually or online at least. Finally, there needs to be a teaching presence. And this is also very uh, important for the blended learning context. In the research within this book, uh, we've got a chapter dedicated to looking at the intersections between self-directed learning and the community of inquiry framework. Um, this entailed a systematic literature review, identifying general trends, and also gaps in the literature, which might be quite um, useful for any researcher working in either self-directed learning or in the blended learning world. Furthermore, we've got another chapter looking at this framework, the community of inquiry framework, in terms of cooperative learning elements. In this chapter, the focus is on the use of Google Docs um, and a geography classroom. The colleagues who wrote this chapter successfully uh, optimized an online social presence by using Google Docs, which is a fairly uh, primitive environment, but uh, from which we get a lot of affordances where students can actually interact and create an online social presence through uh, that platform. Uh, another chapter focuses also on the blended learning uh, in a specifically relating to cooperative learning. And this is considered within a computer literacy classroom. Um, this emphasizes also the need of the different literacies um, that is required for something like self-directed multimodal learning. Blended learning is also approached in terms of common design guidelines. This relates to another chapter that uh, consists of uh, a systematic literature review um, looking at key guidelines provided in different um, works of, of research on blended learning. This framework presented in this chapter is highly relevant for any teacher um, considering um, to implement blended learning for their own classes. Finally, another aspect is also considered in this instructional multimodality uh, approach, and that is looking at the affordances of adaptive learning technologies. Adaptive learning, of course, is very relevant for any uh, teaching and learning situation these days where um, students' need, needs need to be addressed. In other words, adaptive learning Im implies customizing the learning environment, customizing the learning for the student. This relates to the needs um, for self-directed learning, as a self-directed learner can only successfully select their own resources and set goals in an environment tailored to their needs. So within uh, 
the, the needs of an online environment, um, adaptive learning provides us with a lot of opportunities, making use of a lot of data being generated in the learning process. We also look within this book um, at self-directed multimodal learning, not as a neutral activity. We regard it as being situated and uh, being related to the culture and the cultural environment found within the learning situation. This chapter looking at situated learning specifically positions uh, self-directed multimodal learning in terms of teaching practice as uh, this research was focused on student teachers and um, we wanted to know whether uh, at university level where teachers are trained that students are actually prepared for being teachers and not merely uh, being instructed or guided through a process of certain skills and knowledge. And an additional aspect of the specific chapter is cultural elements. And these cultural elements such as language, student diversity, uh, can also be considered within the distance education context, which also highlights the, the different uh, context our students have within the higher education sector in South Africa. With students sitting across the country, um, each student's needs um, must be addressed. And that brings in a lot of problems when it comes to contextualizing learning for all those students with all their different contexts. Two other chapters also consider distance education in this book. One relates to scaffolding teachers' critical reflection, uh, and this is specifically in a design-based context. And then there's also a comparison of hybrid education experiences from Botswana and South Africa. The chapter looking at the comparison of the two experiences uh, relates specifically to how um, two different lecturers experienced um, Institutions where both blended learning as well as face-to-face -face learning are employed. The blended learning in this case specifically relating to distance education. Uh, in this case, the two colleagues who wrote this chapter um, consider the affordances, but also um, potential issues that you can encounter in hybrid environments like that. The whole idea of self-directed multimodal learning um, emphasizes the need for student agency, for students to take charge and for students to actually um, be lifelong learners to function effectively within the fourth industrial revolution. In that, this context, students need to um, learn and relearn, need to continuously adapt their knowledge and skills to the needs of an ever-changing job market. To conclude, Learning is a dynamic and ongoing process, and educators need to prepare students not just to master certain content and skills, but to also prepare learners for being self-directed, lifelong learners. As educators, we need to consider the changing learning ecology, where modes of communication, learning and delivery are also changing. As technology and society changes, we need to adapt. And in this process, we need to be self-directed so that we can become better educators ourselves.